Hey, 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 happy day. Sharon Hornell from here with my Mexican worry dolls. I forgot that I had these. I was doing a video this morning and I ran across them and it reminded me of these amazing little dolls that used to sit on my desk. I'm going to put them on <coughs> in my Italian food manufacturing business. And I would just have them there and they would remind me when I was freaking out over bills or over payroll or over the huge stack of invoices that I didn't know how we were gonna pay or if I couldn't get supplies or if somebody didn't show up and I guess I'm not gonna put them on because they don't wanna go on me. Um, I would just touch one of them and then I would feel better because I would focus on what I could do, not on what I can't do. And that got me to thinking today that I wanna hop on and just talk about seven things that you can and I can and all of us can do Unless, of course, we're symptomatic of COVID-19 right now. Unless we're, you know, in the hospital or on a ventilator or something. All of these things are things that we can and we want to and we should do because we can. The first, of course, is cut yourself some slack. Give yourself a break and validate your feelings. Realize that we are all going through this great traumatic time and we have to acknowledge our feelings. We don't, we, we can validate them and acknowledge them and feel them. We just have to decide to not stay there, not live there. There's a difference between validating our feelings and and dwelling on them and stay there. Um, what we thought was going to be a three-week or two-week process has now turned into an additional month. So we're looking at least of six weeks of the majority of the people, if not all of the people in this country and in the world, being in some way, shape, or form impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, right? All of us are being impacted. But we need to cut ourselves some slack. We need to feel the feelings that we want to feel. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be worried. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be bored. It's okay to be whatever it is that we're feeling. We just don't want to dwell and stay there and move in and, you know, set up camp for the next four weeks, right? We want to do something different. Um, the second thing that we want to do, um, let's look at our little second worry doll, is... <coughs> know that you're absolutely positively not alone right 10 million people in America lost their jobs in two weeks uh, my daughter was one of them uh, every, everybody that's working is as scared and worried and frustrated with what's going on in their life as all the people that aren't working believe it or not it's probably as stressful or more stressful to be going to work and interacting with the public in this scary time as it is to be home worried about finances and money if we haven't prepared and set enough funds aside to make sure that we're going to be okay. Um, so know that you're not alone. The, the, the scariest thing is when we're going through a challenge or a, a drama or a trauma and our human tendency is to feel like we're the only ones, that we're in this all by ourselves. Whenever we feel doubtful or worried or scared or like we're not good enough or like who are we to do something or fearful about something one of the things we automatically do is we feel like we're the only one we feel like we're alone and this is one of those situations where we can absolutely positively know that no matter what we're feeling no matter what we're experiencing there are probably hundreds of hundreds hundreds of thousands if not millions of people actually facing the same exact challenge and just in the knowledge of knowing that you're not alone that can make you feel better. It makes me feel better to know I'm not the only one. I'm trying to help my daughter understand, you're not the only one that lost your job. Yeah, you lost your job. <clears throat> and I think the challenge she's personally having is that her store shut down the week before the pandemic shut it down. Um, she was the only one that was kept on and then she, her whole staff got fired um, and her whole store was shut down. And then the next week, um, she was there for another week, but then the week after that, she was let go. And so she's still struggling with kind of a double whammy what I told her is it just goes to show you that even before the pandemic, individual people were always going through challenges. We're always going through um, dramas and traumas. I mean, we've all had our share of them, right? Um, the third thing that we need to do, let's find our little third worry doll. Where is she? One, two, three. Our little worry doll three is all about grieving the loss of our old life. We need to give ourselves time and the permission to grieve our old life and realize it's not coming back. I think at first, when the, all of this first hit, we thought, okay, there's some hope. Everything will go back to normal. <laughs> but at this point, and, and as far as we are into the um, stay-at-home orders or whatever orders you have in your community, in your area, we need to come to terms with, it's not going to come back. Our businesses that are shut down, they, they'll reopen, but they're not going to look the same as when they shut down. Nothing in our world, and it's not just the economy, but us as human beings. I noticed on a walk yesterday, 
the way people are interacting and responding to one another is changed and that's going to be forever changed. Do we know what it's going to look like? No, but we know it's going to be changed. So now is the time to go through the grieving process and realize it's not coming back. We have all lost the way our lives were and they're not going to come back. They're not going to be the way they were. It's like when my dad died, um, you know, we grieve the loss of people that we love and we, we pray and we wish and we hope that they could come back, but they're never going to come back. So we need to allow ourselves the time to grieve. Our fourth little worry gal, let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four. Our fourth worry, our fourth thing that we can do is turn uncertainty into certainty. Know that just like so many other things in your past and in your life, you will get through this. You will survive this. You will figure it out. Um, <clears throat> each and one of every one of us are so much more capable than we often give ourselves credit for. And that adds to the uncertainty. The uncertainty of everyone else on the planet is adding to our own sense of uncertainty. But we have to just look back in our past and look at where we are now and realize all of the stuff that we've come through, right? Some of us more than others have come through incredible situations, incredible traumas, incredible drama, incredible, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> i got a tickle in my throat today have come through you know incredible situations against all odds you know 10 years ago I had a sudden cardiac arrest and died so why am I still here talking to you why am I even talking about these seven things that we can all do right now that's because I didn't die I made it through that and the vast majority of people don't come out the other side of situations like that I've lost jobs I've lost relationships I'm divorced right so all of these traumas and you can probably relate to some of those things if you think about it you have overcome so much just to be here listening right now that you know that you can get through this too. So our fourth thing is turn uncertainty into certainty, knowing that no matter what, you'll figure this out and you'll get through this. And guess what? A lot of people, believe it or not, are going to actually be better off than they were before the pandemic, than before our world massively changed. Why? Because a lot of us find ourselves going down the wrong road, right? And we don't even know it's the wrong road, but we're in jobs that, that we're not happy in, we're in relationships we're not happy in, we're doing things that don't feel right for our lives. And this is a huge reset opportunity for each and every one of us to say, gosh, I, I got fired, that sucks, that hurt my feelings, but do I really wanna go back to doing that? Even if my same job opened up tomorrow, I was miserable. Do I wanna go back and do that for another 20 or 30 or 40 years? Well, if you, if you think that you maybe don't want to, now is the time to look at and explore other options, other opportunities. Never before has there been a time when we could sit down and go online and Google and research and get access to all kinds of different possibilities. Um, and that leads us to our next little worry doll, which is number five. And she's all about our focus. And what we're focusing on and what we're thinking about is absolutely critical and key. As human beings, we tend to stack things, right? We stack experiences, we stack emotions, we stack feelings. So if we're feeling bad or we're focusing on the past we, and, and we're feeling negative, we tend to stack all kinds of things. So we, we have a bad experience and then we look for all the things in our past or all the reasons that we can stack on top of that to feel bad. Well, we can do that to feel good too, right? We can look for our past experiences and we can look for things that make us feel good and we can stack positive things on top of one another. And so my challenge for you today is focus on the positive things that have happened in your in your life, things that have worked out right, and stack positive, happy emotions on top of one another. Just try that once today and see how much better that makes you feel than stacking on all those negatives. I've been talking to a lot of people lately, and I've been getting just the whole list of the stack, and it's like, whoa, stop, hold the phone, stop, stop. We need to get you to flip the switch and, and focus on all the things that are working instead of all the things that aren't. So focus is key. Um, number six, our little sixth worry doll, is to look at what you can do, right? There's always things in our life, right, that we think we can do and that we can't do. And one of the surest ways to be unhappy and miserable is to focus on things that you can't do, that you can't have. Um, when I was younger, I had um, a lot of, of health issues and health challenges and chronic pain. And for a while, I was I was bedridden for like three years in my 20s. When everybody else is, you know, getting married and having fun and partying and, and dating and having a good time, I was literally uh, bedridden. I couldn't walk, I couldn't get around, I couldn't do a whole lot of stuff. And I was focusing on and thinking about all the time, guess what? All the things that I couldn't do, all the pain I was in, all the, all the things I was missing out on. 
and it wasn't until my doctors you know said hey we, we're pretty much at a loss here we don't know what we can do for you that I started looking for what I could do because before I was being like a passive participant in my health and in my wellness and I was trusting the experts to fix me and it wasn't until I had that switch in mostly my mindset and my focus from what I can't do to what I can do that anything changed and freed up in my life and since then I've you know have have been married had a family kids granddaughter um, and my life changed 100% direction because I flipped from focusing on what I can't do to what I could do and then I stacked on that because humans stack all the things that I could do and, and actually accomplished a whole lot of stuff that I would never have thought possible when I was laying in that bed in my 20s and the seventh thing, our seventh worry doll, uh, it's the seventh thing that any one of us can do right now, is we can find the gifts in the situation that we're in right now. Um, one of the, the most important things that we always need to do is be grateful, and, and again, it goes back to focus. Look at what we want to see. Look at what is working instead of what isn't working. Look at what we can do instead of what we can't do. Look at all the positives, because there are a lot of positives coming out of this situation. If there's negatives, but let's not focus and dwell on them. Let's look at what are the gifts in the situation. I'm getting to hang out with my four-year-old granddaughter every day, it, you know, every day of the week, all day, and we are having incredible fun. There is such power in hanging out and connecting more deeply with, with the human beings in our life, those that we love and care about. So time with our family and, and enhancing our relationship is a huge opportunity, and never in my life before have I had the gift of this much time with those that I love and care about, right? It was always, a minute here, a minute there, an hour here, an hour there, in between running through our lives. And so that in and of itself is a huge gift. It gives us time to uh, <clears throat> pause and decide that, like I said earlier, are we really moving in the direction we want for our life? And you know, so many times we've had the excuse that I don't have time, I don't have time to work on my business, I don't have time to work on myself, I don't have time to work on my career, I don't have time to do those projects at home. Guess what, now we have the time to do it are we doing it that's the biggest thing is we can do that you know we can catch up on on anything that we've wanted to catch up on we can read those books we can we can watch those you know series on Netflix whatever series on Netflix or series on television that you've wanted to catch up with you can do that and we don't want that to be the only thing that we're doing but there's so many opportunities that we can look into and if your job or your business is gone this is the time to really focus on your own skills and your own ability to give value and add value to the world because that's what we're rewarded for, right? Um, it's how much you can share and how much you can give value to the world. That's how we're rewarded in return. So those are my seven things, my seven worry dolls and my seven thoughts for today. I'm mean, gonna actually wear these little gals on my walk today. I, haven't, I forgot about them and so it's really fun to pull them out and then say, okay, well, what can this mean to me? So now if I'm feeling like I'm feeling bad. I'm just going to touch number one worry doll and say, hey, cut yourself some slack. You get to feel bad just like everybody else sometimes. You can wake up in a funk. Just don't live there. Just don't stay there. So that's it. That is my seven things you can do and we can all do right now. Unless, of course, we're symptomatic of the, the COVID virus. And if we are, then we need to take care of ourselves physically and our health first and foremost to make sure that we do get through this together and that we do survive. Have an amazing day. If I can help you in any way, Sharon Hornellstrom. Take care. Bye.